Hello and welcome to the Kennel Podcast, episode three. They say a week is a long time in rugby league, and boy, wasn't it the case for the Bulldogs. They went from losing 30 to 6 against Manly to defeating Melbourne in Melbourne quite convincingly. Now, before we get into the podcast, I just wanted to have a quick call out as to the racism thing that happened with Lichel Mitchell. Uh, on behalf of the Kennel Podcast, the forum, and everything associated with the Kennel, we would like to say we abhor racism in all uh, its facets. We do not accept racism. We will call it out when we see it, and we don't need racism in our game. Our game has always been uh, welcoming to everybody. It is multicultural in this round, and i just like to remind everyone that racism is unacceptable. Now, uh, we did say last week that we were going to have an NRL superstar with us uh, this week on the panel. Uh, now, I'm going to introduce my host, Divo. How you going, Dib? Good, mate. Good. And I'd like to welcome uh, our guest for today, Mr. Omar Sliman Kill. Welcome, Omar. Thanks for having me, guys. I wouldn't say NRL superstar. I will say I did play a few games of NRL, but um, I had a really, really great 20s career, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, you're a superstar now, I so that's all that matters. Everyone know this isn't a Bulldogs uh, retro jersey. It's actually a Herswell Junior Rugby League Football Club jersey. So I've, uh, I took it off Debo's um, shoulders there. Hang on a second. Did you not specifically request a blue and white jersey for this podcast? I said, you know what, <laughs> first podcast with you guys, I should give some respect to the kennel because obviously that's the Bulldogs. Yeah, my so man, we did get the colours. We did get the colours for the dogs. We Up got the, the mighty struggles. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, Omar, it's it's good to see you. Uh, it's good to see you continue to kick goals after your NRL career. Um, you won the block yeah. uh, most recently. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, you know what? It was um, very, very tough. Live TV is very, very tough. But I think um, just the renovation side of it, uh, the biggest killer was probably just the weather. Like the size of the block was a lot bigger than previous years. Uh, it was, what, 500 squares of living, 10 acres of block. So the landscape was stupid. Squares. But um, yeah, just it was just really, really cold and really like sludgy. So that made it pretty tough. But we got an amazing result at the end that of was it. Incredible! We met amazing congratulations. People. Yeah, we met amazing people along the way, and it's just one of those experiences. Um, you're just gonna keep with you for a very long time. The chosen one. Yeah, the, the chosen, chosen one. Or the anointed. <laughs> the chosen one. Who? Tom Panos. That's a Tom Panos special. Tom Panos. He's great. Omar, would you say if you were to compare playing rugby league or being on the block, which one was tougher? Ah, uh, very different, very different. I think um, the block was probably more mentally exhausting. Yeah. Like, obviously, the hours were nonstop. You had a lot of sleepless nights and stuff like that. But um, it was just getting up and doing it repetitively for over three months. I can only imagine. Um, whereas NRL, rugby league, you have that little rest in between games. And if you make a mistake one week, you just back it up the next. Yeah. So uh, very different, uh, both very difficult, but... You, know you got what? your mates there, 16 of them on the floor. Yeah, yeah, you know what? But then you got like a brother like Oz, you yeah. know what I mean? So it's, it's a little bit yeah. exactly and we're yeah. there for each other. And uh, it's a little bit different to um, rugby league. Uh, it's a lot more closer. Like the block was just us two. Like everything we did, we just looked at each other and we're like, far, we've got to keep kicking yeah. on here. But yeah, that was, a bit different. That yeah. was great. You guys handled it so well, man. Yeah. Like congratulations again. Thank um, you. Now... You don't want to say you're a superstar, and that's fair enough. You know, a nice, humble bloke. Uh, but tell us, uh, you grew up in a, in uh, New Zealand, so how did you come to rugby league when rugby, you know, New Zealand's a rugby union mad country? You know what, there's, um, it's, it's, uh, there's certain schools that really, really love rugby union, probably similar to, is it the GPS schools here? We only got the GPS here. Yeah. It's also that in Brisbane as well. The yeah, got exactly right. Yeah, so you get the school, school yeah. I went to Auckland Boys Grammar, which is... Probably the greatest rugby school of all time. Wow. Um, we've got 52 All Blacks, I think, and wow, County. Amazing. So that's the most of All Blacks coming out of one school. I think Christchurch Boys is second. It's crazy. But it's just been a – it was an amazing rugby union school. I loved the Warriors growing up. I never had the chance to play uh, rugby league all through my high school career because rugby union was just so big in our school. Yeah. Um, and then when I just got the opportunity to kind of give it a crack, um, crazy story, but I ended up giving it a, giving it a really good crack and – uh, what come of it was a very nice few years of rugby league. Wow. I remember watching Omar and um, there was that period, I think, about late 2000s, early 2010s, where the Toyota Cup got precedent over the New South Wales Cup. So it was always before the first grade That's game right, and they yeah. televised it on Fox Sports. And for about three years there, that Warriors team was like the all-star team. Yeah, so right, automatic, if we saw New Zealand Warriors were playing in the 20s, me and my dad and my brother would just tune in and just see this guy and the likes of, I think it was uh, 
Licky Licky and Sean Johnson. Sean Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. yeah. It just wow. We had a yeah, we had a stacked under twenty side. It was Madalino. Like everyone, every everyone that came out of the Warriors twenties, um and the majority of them really kicked on. If they didn't yeah. kick on here, they kicked on in Super League. Yeah. Um a few of them went to rugby union. So yeah, we had some really, really good talent coming out of that. Excellent. Well, I'm so glad that you've joined us this evening. It's uh, wonderful to have you, and I look forward to discussing uh, you all know, things rugby league. All things rugby league, mate. All things rugby league. All things doggies. Yeah, yeah. yeah the doggies. Um, so I guess um, you know, as we sort of get started into it, um, the dogs had a resounding success down there in Melbourne. We hadn't won against Melbourne in seven years. Went down to Melbourne and you know put a put a good score on them. You know, up to the 50th minute. 26 nil. They made a little bit of a comeback, but I thought the doggies did well to um, to scramble. Uh, Debo, Omar, how did you guys see it? Well, I think we just got caught unawares that every Melman's uh, literally a shoe in down there. And I know they're missing a large chunk of their players from last year. Just didn't really think it over and thought they're losing a lot of depth. They do get a lot of players back this week, but I honestly thought despite Melman missing a lot of players, they were still going to beat Canterbury, especially after Canterbury's performance last week. Um, but Canterbury came out firing. They got the roll on. Um, Flanagan was spreading out the ball more. Preston's, Preston was great in the middle, was linking up with his outside men. Uh, Kiraz had a great game off the wing. Incredible, man. Um, yeah. I mean, again, Reed, uh, Reed Marnie's just he's sensational. So, awesome. Yeah. What a dummy half. And your forwards, kick out was just some had some oh, strong yeah. runs up the middle. He knew he needed to make up for that he in the early game. <laughs> Raymond Fatale Mariner, he was a big presence in defence there as well. Um, yeah, I mean, they blew Melbourne away off the park. It could have been up four or five tries by half time. Um, effectively, I thought the game was over by half time. I think that's what it was. And even though Melbourne tried to stage that comeback, I think the doggies stripped, scrambled all, but I feel like they had done enough. You think, uh, do you think they can back it up, Omar? I feel like they can. They're not a bad side. I mm-hmm. think um, people don't understand that the dogs actually have a decent side. Um, it's going to take a bit to gel. Obviously, they, um, they, there's players in key positions that probably haven't played together, um, like uh, Reed Marnie with Burden. I mean, that's a new combination that's only going to keep firing. I feel like uh, Reed Marnie is going to give a lot of space to the halves and the outside backs. So just as service from dummy half is probably the best in the NRL. And I think Paras are really feeling that they've lost a bit of that. I mean, the difference between passing with Hodgson and Marnie is... It's actually it's really different. clear that you see when when the Eels are playing, like Moses, I think Moses is playing in the first rounds, even though they've lost, he, he's playing really well in the first rounds, but I feel he doesn't have that service and that space that he had last year. He's overcompensating. Yeah, he, I think he is trying to overcompensate. But enough about the Eels. No one cares about the Eels on a doggy's podcast. We're talking about Reed Marnie. We're talking about, we're, we're talking about how much of a loss Reed Marnie is. Yeah, yeah. Look, but I, I want to ask you, um, Flanagan last week against the Storm, I felt, did what we want from a halfback. It was nothing spectacular, but I felt like he was getting the ball early to Jacob Preston and Preston was able to get it to uh, Avarillo and, and Kiraz and they had really, really good games and really outdid the left side despite having kick out and Fox and, uh, you know, uh, and Burden on that side. Do you think that um, it's, it's uh, we can see or Flanning can continue to develop that now that he's got sort of that good service from Marnie inside him? I feel like Flanagan's just, I know he's a bit of a up and down for the dogs. I mean, the fans, the, stay- the fans probably haven't seen the best in him. He needs uh, to be consistent. They did. They did pay. Um, they did pay a lot of money for money. Uh, sorry for Flanagan. Yeah. So they probably expected the best straight away. Uh, it is going to take some time, but I do feel like um, he's probably not the halfback that's going to win your comp. It's unfortunate to say, but I don't think he's just got that. He doesn't have that in him. Look, um, what I notice is, especially to the left side, he spread it really well. He's getting mm. early and firing it out to the left. That was great to see. And also what I noted was he actually took on the line. He did take uh, on the line a couple of times. He, I think he took it on maybe close to 10 times. I was It was good to see. Um, as Omar stressed, is he the man to take him on, take him forward in the medium to long term? Uh, he has to be consistent. And I haven't seen that from him. Look, there is a good half. He's not... On the market, I'd say, but he's not the first in line. I mean, Brad and Trindle from Cronulla. I mean, money talks these days. I mean, it's worth luring, in my opinion. So, it's just you just got to look at the last ten years, the last ten grand final winners. 
the half is probably the best player in that side. If not, definitely the top three. Um, I don't even think Flanagan's the top five players in the dogs at the moment. And for a, for you to say that about a half pack, I mean, you look at previous winners, like what is it, Luke Carey, mm. um, Jerome Hughes, Nathan Cleary, uh, Adam Reynolds. Cooper Cronk. Cooper Cronk. Like, you you got you these someone. halfbacks that you could easily throw a million dollars at and you know they're going to make a difference to your side. You need someone Probably proven. from the get-go. And I feel like um, Bert, someone like Burden probably needs that too. Um, it's just to make him be that player that he was at Penrith. I feel like it's going to take it's going to take someone a lot bigger oh, than Flanagan. From what, I've, from what I've seen from Braden Trindle in the first two rounds from Cronulla, I think he's worth... With worth enticing across the Canterbury, he looks every bit that he should be a starter at another. If he's doing so well at Cronulla, it's that, just uh, unlucky that he's stuck behind Nico Hines, who was you know he'd be a starter at a lot of clubs. Amazing. I've seen a lot from there, whether you guys agree on that or not. But well, I've, Trindle was one of the better players last week, anyway. Oh, so. oh yeah, absolutely. and he was quite good in the first round as well. Hey, he I was he had, kicked a forty twenty. He, he was season last year as well. So, do, do you think the Bulldogs need like a? a, a an old head, like like a, like a lot of people made you know uh, so many things up about Chad Townsend going to Townsville and you know with North Queensland he's not going to do that well and what are they doing and then he's gone up there and become a revelation and people sort of seeing the value of an experienced half, but is that someone that the Bulldogs need because I don't know if if Braden Trindle would be any different to Flanagan in our setup. I know he's probably got a little bit more talent than, say, Flanagan, but would we need someone with a little bit more uh, experience or would it be a better idea to blood someone like a Carl Oluwapu or a Khaled Rajab and sort of build them up to be that seven? Uh, you just got you just got to see what um, – obviously, Phil Gould knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. He's been proven in many different teams, Look, uh, whether that be origin or club level. Yeah. I personally feel like – you guys are probably a few years away from a grand final win. And if that's the case, it'd probably be a good idea to blood in the young guys. Only because um, you can see with a lot of very, very good players now, it took them a few games, right. if not years, to really come good. Yeah. So um, if they do see talent as a... What is his name? I'm Carl Alawapu. Alawapu, and then he's obviously playing really good in the New South Wales Cup on knock-on, if it, whatever it is. I actually saw him first and then you got Carla, I've heard some really, really good things both about Khaled as well. So, both of them. Um, it's it's probably worth worth playing both of them this year just mm. to give them some good game time um, heading into the seasons coming forward. I mean, uh, last year uh, on Twitter, someone asked uh, Phil Gould if they were gonna, it, it, how they were going with Khaled Rajab and what he thought, and he said at some point in 2023 they want to blood him in first grade because yeah. you know he had a great, great World Cup. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. It's it's just we want to see, you know, as a doggies fan. We, honestly, it's you know I remember in 2004 when Belmore and you know, when we won, and even in 2012 and 2014 when we made the grand final. I mean. You know, the whole Bankstown, the Canterbury Bankstown area was just on fire. Like, yeah. it was just incredible that, you know, the, the I know people that live in Belmore that aren't even Bulldogs fans, and it was just, it was, there was such a festive, like, festival sort of feel about it that when the Bulldogs were doing well, and it's my area. So, I, growing up in Sydney, I don't think anyone um, in grand final week does it better than them. Like, their whole streets, yes. and not, not just one suburb, it's suburb to suburb. You, you can't drive your car there. It's logjam of all fans in their cars, fans on the street, just partying. Uh, I don't think anyone in Sydney does it better than them. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a great, you know, as a doggies fan, it, it really is. I actually have a story from 2014. So after the uh, they won the semi final to, to make it to the grand final, we went down to uh, in front of Joe Bell's in Belmore and uh, we were, you know, they had the drums going, everyone was dancing. And someone someone points at me and says, Boys, it's James Graham. And I was like, No, we we'll put the headphones like, It's James Graham. <laughs> I should have started writing a Oh, and then they realise, oh, it's just some doggies fan that looks like him. <laughs> just some, some ginger. Which colour your hair? Uh, Extra my... red? Nah, bro. Nah, this nah, it's, this is me, bro. <laughs> um, actually, on the Bulldogs, uh, I, I want to ask you this. Um, we had Trent Barrett last year and then we had Mick Potter, right? When Trent Barrett was coaching, right, we couldn't average 16 points a game. Trent, Mick Potter comes in. All of a sudden, we're averaging 28, 29 points. This is not a slight on uh, a slight on Trent Barrett, and this is not, you know, it, it's just uh, factually, right? Can you just give me a little bit of an insight on on why 
there's such a difference in teams when the coach changes. And you see, like, even, for example, with, with Cameron Serraldo this year, we scored 26 points against Melbourne. Sure, they had a lot of people out, but we had four forwards out. We had, we had you know, some juniors playing, you know, some debutants yeah. and things like that. Can, can you just sort of just explain that a little bit? I feel, it's just um, I feel like certain players react to coaches differently. Um, you've got to be able to get the best out of your players every week. Uh, everyone's talented enough to make an RL, so mm. therefore they're talented enough to play. Mm. you just got to get the best out of them. And I think a perfect example is someone like Wayne Bennett doing what he did with the Dolphins or what he's doing with the Dolphins already. Um, most of those guys were on their outer yeah. with all the clubs. Um, and then you get someone like Wayne Bennett just pretty much makes them turn up. And when they turn up, you, they've already got the – they've already got that – what he got last? Uh, motivation. He's just got that it's persona. He yeah, he knows motivation. how to get the best out of you. I mean, Bellamy's probably the same. Yeah. You just want to play for him. Certain coaches just know how to. And diff players, some players are very different. Like, uh, for example, if Wayne Bennett was to have a chat with you two, it would be very diff different conversations because he'll know what would t what it will take to bring the best out of you and then what it will take to bring out. Right. And then he brings it all in a team. And I think certain coaches know how to do it. Um, ex players are a little bit different when they're coaching. I feel like they've been coached a certain way, and whatever worked for them, they probably implement on the players. Right, okay. And uh, you you see it a lot with ex players becoming coaches, and um, the good ones that keep kicking on are the ones that know how to get the best out of their players. And I feel like uh, Trent just probably couldn't do that. I thought. I thought. I mean, Potter. He's he had the pedigree. Everyone forgets about two decades ago. I think he won back to back. Um, reserve grade premierships at St George, yeah. and then he went over to. He also did time as an assistant coach, uh, and then he, then went he also went over to England and he did well there when the European really Super well League. In England, yeah, and then um, he's he, come back down here, and because of the politics playing out uh, at a club like West Tigers, um, yeah, anyway, West Tigers. I mean, even <laughs> just hearing that name, just... <laughs> we'll get into it. Don't worry. <laughs> I mean, I don't think he he didn't get any help there. If anything. It's like everyone got in a way to hinder him. And I think he had, what, a ninth place finish there or yeah, something? Yeah, he did. That's right. Ten you know? years in a row probably. Yeah, I know, but Pot Wasn't that the Tigers' it's... position for like... Yeah, but like Pot Tigers no one... Tigers nine, mate. It kills the... them. I think they were playing for a finals position that last round, but it's like they worked against him. Yeah, he didn't. He, didn't he definitely didn't have Just any support. And factions. I thought they got rid of him too quickly because he came over and I remember actually that year um, there were a lot of the teams that were talking about maybe bringing Potter on. Um, and then Tigers, he ended up going to the Tigers. And then after what happened, the policy, he just didn't want to do it anymore. Um, Whereas Barrett, um, I think he just got a push because he was an assistant coach of Ivan Cleary. Cleary and and they had a good lineup. Uh, you know, Cleary built him up into a stacked lineup, really, because uh, that was that was not literally one year they went and made the finals. It was building up over yeah. five or so years. They'll bring up juniors, recruiting players, and you know, they're very smart in the player market, Penrith. So, and, you know, and they had Phil Gould as well, who was, you know, yeah. pulling the strings. He's great genius. What a, yeah. He's, he's, you know, so great genius. I mean, Barrett's only go really was just an assistant coach for That's a few right. years, yeah, yeah. whereas Potter was better at handling players. He's mm. had two decades plus, plus as a player, and he was an all star player, really. And he won a few premierships as well. So he knew what it takes. He had won a few daily M's as well at, a few, at two different clubs. So wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, he won it at Canterbury and he also won it at St George, playing the same position at the back. Wow. So our oh, Potter was there, but but see, because you know why I asked, he, he captain as well. He also captained the club. I, I just want to go back and you say to get the best out of the players. Can you? And I'm probably putting you on the spot a little bit, but you know, I've got you here, might as well use it. Um, when you say get the best out of your players, is it? Just is it the relationship? Is it the way you speak? Is it the type of training? Is it uh, w what do you mean exactly when you say get the best out of the players? Uh, you want to you just you just want to be like I think Dibba is about to say you want to be able to get them to a position where they are like not playing for you but playing for them, so like playing for the team. Yeah. Like you want to. Make sure they have that team camaraderie where everyone just backs each other. Everyone loves each other. Everyone wants to just turn up for We're the being team. Being down on the outside in the time. And Penrith had that the last few years. You could, as much as a lot of teams probably don't like their attitude and what they were doing, mate, they did not care who scored a try in that team as long as everyone Someone was did. a part of yeah. it. They were all just slapping each other's back, patting yeah, each other. They were just happy for And, and to be honest, like I'll, I'll say, I said this on the first episode and I'll say this all day long, 
the 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 confidence that Luai shows, the confidence that the the Penrith team shows, I love it. I absolutely love it. I want to see more of it. Why not? These guys are full of you know testosterone and full of you know adrenaline all day long. That's what they do for a living. And when they succeed and they show a little bit of confidence, why would we want to break that down? In fact, uh, you know, for me, especially if you're playing for New South Wales, I want to see that passion and that grit. I want to see that that drive. Yeah, it takes you to like American sports. Um, if like if you shoot a basketball, you hit a three. The whole team's jumping up yeah, on the sideline. Yeah, 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 yeah. Going off, they got all these love it. signs. Love it. And as the other team watching that happen to you, you just burn. Yeah, like yeah. you seem just like fuck. I want to. <laughs> I want to I wanna get them next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think rugby league does need that. Um, okay. It's kind of gone away from the good old days where everyone used to love going to the ground and watching the game. I feel like, you know what, this year has actually been a good first couple of rounds, right. I think, in crowd attendance, but it kind of slowed down a lot. And I feel like it's just became too friendly. Like people were just playing each other and they were just like, oh, you know what, I like you, I like you, which is completely fine. But hey, you need that aggression. You need to want to hate the other team. Yeah, I agree. Look, uh, Peter Vlandis, he never gets enough credit. Um He's trying to bring back tribalism into the game. He wants to, to bring yeah. back the suburban grounds, but he doesn't to. want to bring back a dilapidated ground such as Leichhardt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants to get the government to invest money into there, build you your 25,000 seat or 30,000 or 25,000 is probably ideal with the option of ever expanding it and have two or three teams playing there or two teams and just bring back that tribalism. Like... Uh, a lot of my mates, they're Canterbury fans. They bring back nostalgic memories of, for example, walking up Belmore Road in oh, – uh, Sorry, Bel Burwood Road in Belmore or catching the train yeah, there I'll and walking some. through the park lane there to go to the stadium. And, you know, just on the way there, everyone will be waving their flags and saying, go the doggies yeah. and just jig it up for the games. They would go early and see the President's Cup, the reserve grade, and then on to first grade. And it's the same thing with us. It has to be like English soccer. Uh, it's Cogra, the whole true. neighborhood. It yeah. has to be like. And it has to be just without the. Uh, without the violence. Without the violence. Without the violence. Without the violence. Crazy, I, I the remember, racism, but I, it has to be yeah, there. Yeah. I remember Cogra Oval. Uh, it's probably about a half hour, 25 minute walk from home. And the walk would start from our house, probably two hours before the game or two and a half, me and my brother. And then along the way, you, more people are joining you. And, and did I do that walk with you a couple of years ago? When we went to watch the dragons play like, rabbits, that was that from that was up the Princess Highway, was did it? We walk it? I think we did. And we got fish and anyway. chips or something. <laughs> yes, we did. Yeah, it was up the Princess Highway. It got me walking. But then he, brought, he wanted to bring back memories of his. Um, <laughs> he used, so he's like, and he like, used me. <laughs> but by the time you get there, you got you're surrounded by about fifty to hundred people who started the walk literally a few streets down from yours, and everyone's just dressed in their gear and everything, and it's just, you know, everyone's just talking optimistically about yeah. the day, and you know. Uh, you know, I think this guy's going to steamroll that guy. I remember we used to talk about Gordon Tallis and then, yeah, he left us. <laughs> He's, he, wanted, he couldn't wait till he got out of there. No, look, the money was great. You can't blame him when you now you look back on it. Um, Plus he's playing, he was playing for Wayne Bennett. So just a quick one. Going back to what you said about certain players have it or they don't have it, and we're talking about Flanagan. Um, I'll give you a perfect example of a player that probably – didn't have that much in the bag in regards to like someone like Cody Walker who mm. can step off both feet, run a mark, do whatever he wants on a footy field, and he does it really well. I was actually having a chat with someone the other day, but James Maloney is one of those players. Oh, yeah. Uh, the guy was he an was absolute freak. freak. Hated going to the gym. Hated training. And absolute – he's probably one of the best players I've ever played alongside. And the, yeah. the thing that he did, but he did it so, so well, he probably had three or four things that he did really well. Not many halfbacks that play on the left-hand side can kick that well with their right foot down that short side. And he did it every single game and he managed to hit 40-20s. He used to do that. He used to take the line on, defend, even though he was an awful defender, but he used to put his body in the line. But he always had that little pet play where he had to take it to the line and he'd bring a second rower and I'll just step inside. And... That's what someone like – that's a player that someone like Flano could look at. Not saying they're anything alike, yeah. but – he just needs to get a few pet plays yeah. that he knows that he can maximise the impact from and he just needs to just play off those. And it, it takes a lot, but if someone like Maloney can do it and win grand finals and be one of the best players, and he probably should have got Clive Churchill. He was one of the better players in that tournament. Was uh, was Maloney the most confident player he ever saw? Did he even have nerves before the game? He uh, just seems like it was Mr. Cool, like carefree. And I never saw it. I actually had never seen it. I noticed that he about went, but, 
The thing with Maloney is, like, he's probably the worst guy to ever have as a club captain. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he is the first person you turn to on a footy field. That's amazing. Just have him right next year and you're just all confident. That's, that's you grow with him. But, yeah, but he's, he had pet plays. Like, if you look at him, what is he, 60 kilos? Like, yeah. and they would but he come just off. had great pet plays, man. And, and success followed him. Wherever he went, he yeah. sort of brought success. Penrith, Roosters, Warriors. Sharks. And everyone he left. It's crazy. He left the Warriors. They probably, I think they finished dead last. He left Roosters. They finished almost dead last. Fifteenth, I think. Yeah, Penrith right. dropped, compared, but then they yeah. they obviously they dropped for a reason. Yeah, they had but, something in yeah. the bag, and then Cronulla as well. Premiership, Premiership, and then they kind of struggled for a few time. years yeah, after that. Taking some time. Until they went and got Nico. It's a, it's a great point actually that that Flanagan can look to sort of um, pet plays, a few yeah. pet plays. Um, what do you think of Seraldo's uh, approach so far? Um, as as coach of the doggies, I like him. Yeah, yeah, I actually do like him. I met him not long ago okay. um, at a gym out at Penrith. Nice. Um, he was with the Penrith boys, I think, last season, just before the grand final, a few weeks out. Um, actually, a great gym out there too. Uh, but actually, I met him and I actually had a really, really good chat with him. Uh, I knew him from the early years in twenties. I played against him a few times, not against him, but against teams that he was a part of. Mm. And uh, he's very, very switched on. And I think um, I do think Penrith will miss someone like him um, because I, I can see the value that he brings. And to be honest, he'll he'll be very, very good for the dogs. And Phil Good wouldn't get someone like that if he if he knew he didn't have something. Yeah, there. yeah. I mean, what stood out for me a lot was his demeanor. The so- dogs are playing ball. I mean, that's a good start. They're yeah. throwing the ball around and they're doing they're it well. Playing so. zero balls. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I mean. Like they, yeah. he's he's kind of trying it out with them, and eventually he'll get the nitty gritty stuff yeah. with them, and then they'll you be able some, to grind some close games. But, and they're signing some flashy players that come. I mean, you got Crichton coming yeah. next year as well. Massive, Crichton's massive. But I think he's backing them. Like I remember last year, and I hate to keep mentioning Trent Barrett again, but I feel like I have to because I remember um, in one of the press conferences he said. This team can't score more than 20 points, so we have to keep the opposition to below 20 points to win. Stupid. Like, I feel like it was almost like he was playing negative rugby league. That's amateur. Negative football. Amateur mistake. Right? Like, if you're playing negative rugby league, you're never going to win. Right, you you come across to Seraldo, and you know one of the one in the press conference, one of the journals was saying, you know, they they threw caution to the wind, and he said, no, they didn't. That's how we want to play. This is what we want to define ourselves yeah, he's, as. He's confident. We know what we did. We know how we did it. Short to the back end, we sort of ran out a little bit of steam, but we still scrambled. But this is how we want to play. And I think, for me, that's a, such a stark contrast in coaches that this guy backs his players. They're young. They're still a new team, but he's not scared. Even after Manly, he said, that's fine. We lost our first round. We'll go back and assess, but we're not going to change our processes. He took the heat off the players. I didn't say that last year with Barrett. If anything, I felt like he was making it worse. I thought, like, he, if anything, he was playing up to the media and literally laying it on the players. Well, none that's, of the that's the that's none what that's none the, of the players, I got. None of the players at the Dogs are really in a position to but, be losing their spot at the moment. I mean, that's the vibe I got. Like, which is a good thing. Like, yeah. they're not really like pressured week in week out by journalists saying, "Oh, you got one week, or you got two yeah, weeks." That's, like, yeah, yeah, Which is good that Seraldo has really taken that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think Phil Gould plays a big part in that as well. I think he's sort of genius. Yeah, he, he sort of he's like he's almost like the. The, the 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 shield in some ways where he can he attracts that media attention. They ask him and he knows how to respond and it sort of takes that pressure a little bit off I, I don't, both Seraldo and the dogs I don't, and the players. I don't think anyone, and I could be fanboying here, but I don't think anyone in the history of the game is has a more, um, if you think about it, more qualified resume than him. Former player, played in a grand final, former most successful New South Wales coach. Uh, two-time premiership winning coach at two different clubs, youngest winning premiership winning coach in the history of the game. Um, started the success, wow. yeah. Started, <laughs> yeah. Started the most successful, started the successful era at the Roosters, and then to top it off, uh, he's worked in the media for thirty years. He knows the go, knows the ins and outs, how the club should handle itself. Out. When did he get married? Who? Phil. Phil? I got no idea. <laughs> When's his birthday? <laughs> Still don't know. <laughs> but anyway, um, on to that. So he What's knows his how to advise. Coffee? I don't think he even drinks coffee, to be honest. I don't. Yeah, no, I honestly don't think he does. Tell us more. <laughs> uh, I won't reveal where he lives. <laughs> it's very close to where I live. Anyway, um, 
you know, he's in a – and he's also fo- director of football. He's got the pull of the heavyweights. Um, when I mean heavyweights, in media, the richest men in Australia, um, he's got the pull. He's a Basically, perfect person. To he's got everything. Club. He can advise him media-wise. He can build a club up from top to bottom. He can help you recruitment. He can advise the coach. No one's more decorated than him in the history of the game. I don't think there's anyone more decorated. Not with that many clubs and not with that much media and obviously with like he's he's done everything. No one's more decorated. I don't think the dogs are very lucky to have someone like Phil Gould. Um so we come up against the Tigers next week. Look, the Tigers are still a basket case. They're unfortunately it's so sad to see. Like I you know, I have some close close friends who are Tigers fans and it's just well, where, where, you know, where do they go from here? Like, I, I never, I never liked. Got to rewind the clock back to 2005. Well, they tried that and they brought Team Chains back, and I, I just don't think that, that was, was the right thing. That was just the, the general rewind. No, the clock. Just, <laughs> that was honestly 2005 was a one hit wonder. It was the miracle of miracles. That was granted. I can see you I guys both I just care. like the Tigers. No, no, no. no, 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 no that was no, a no, miracle. No, 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 honestly. Yeah. They had done nothing before in the lead up to that. They were slightly burning up in 2004. Then after 2005, they didn't make the finals for the next four seasons. You know, it's just and, – and and since that two years where I think 2010, 2011, they've done nothing since. I, I just don't feel like they've, they've – uh, I don't think they've defined – what they want to be like it's it, it's like it, it's almost like a, a lost identity like they don't they've, know who they want to be like at they've least, gone back to being Balmain Tigers and West Magpies yeah, at the bottom of the rung of the ladder in the 90s and now fighting it out for control of the boardroom faction here faction there um you know i think they're not doing it well as a joint venture it's, it's it's disappointing like honestly i thought okay so uh, you know, I, I said this before, I do feel sorry for Brett Kamali that he had to go through what he did last year, sort of being the caretaker coach. But, uh, like, I, I look at even Michael Maguire, he's not a bad coach. I don't think he's a bad coach. And I, I think, you know, he, he tried to do things I there. Like I, I like Madge. I, I, Madge is, I think he did wonders at, at, at the Rabbitohs and, and I think he could have done something at the West Tigers, but it was just, you know, the media is not kind to them. Um, their board's not, you know. They don't have the board. team to do it either. You know, they don't have the team to do it. They, they're surprising me this year. I actually thought they would be a lot better than they are. So did I. Um, I honestly saw Tim Sheens in now two press conferences. He's in his early 70s. He's, spent, he's not a young 50-year-old anymore or 40-year-old that's still hungry or even a guy in his 50s. He's now in his early 70s. He's been out of the game for about a decade. I just feel like he spent too long out of the game. He's not hungry anymore. Well, why don't I they just? Why don't see? That's the decision. Touch, that's I the think. decision that I don't get. I don't understand. Um, we that. saw someone like Billy Slater, who's probably the same age as Robbie <sighs> and um, Benji, um, literally turn that like that Queensland team on paper should not have should won. Not have t- won. T- yeah, up right. all three games. And Billy comes out with his mates and does that to a team and actually dominates those games. I don't understand. I'm still confused at why. Tim Sheens couldn't have had a job where just to be like the lookover person director and the director of, maybe like of the football, full football. The director and of football. just give the gig to Benji and Robbie. If that's if that's the direction you're going to go, um, what's the point in him coming back oh, and being a coach and having them as assistants? Exactly. I would do it the other way around. Let them take the reins. Well, well I actually think I Let think them one take of the reins. they both understand it. Like Robbie Farah is probably one of the best hooker defenders I've ever seen. Like they, or like the amount of effort yeah, that he yeah. puts in. He knows how to wrestle. He's not the biggest bloke. Um, and then Benji, probably one of the best attacking players. Incre- I mean, for me, so, uh, you, they don't lose anything. Like they've got their attacking. He understands how to score snap. tries. Yeah. And Robbie Farah's probably got most of the def- defending side of it. And he was a great. He was a good. He was a really good hooker. Played Origin. Played for the Kangaroos. Like they've got it there. Well, I don't, you I, know, won a grand final. Won a grand the final. Lot. Exactly right. And he's but Papali was a massive buy. Dewey's one of. Probably their best player. Um, and week in, week out, absolutely puts his body on the line. Papali just looks two weeks in, and I'm just looking at him behind the sidelines, especially against Newcastle, and, jeez, that's not the same Papali. I don't get the up here starting from... Uh, Apicarasau? Starting off the bench that first game. That just I think they were saying he had a niggling injury. I think that's what it was, was trying to protect him. He, was, you know, he played anyway, so you know, he should have just... Look... They're a good side. They could turn it around. I don't know how they're going to do it. They've lost two at home at Leichhardt. So they, it's two games they should have won. They well, really at least won, won. If they really wanted to get off to a flyer. How do you lose against the Knights that lost Caelan Ponga, Jaden Braley? They lost. And uh, Gold Coast. Uh, 
uh, they lost to two cellar dwellers. That's how I see it. Yeah, and they're down at the cellar as well. Well, I mean, for me, you know what you know what what sort of gets me is they've put a timeline on Benji and Farah coming in and having team scenes there. For me, what I would have done is I would have brought in like a Shane Flanagan. I think Shane Flanagan is a great coach and he could have come in and given them that grit and defined defined who they want to be for the next four or five years. Let uh, Benji and Robbie learn the craft under Shane Flanagan and then once they're ready, you know, they can, they can come up. Right, there's no need to bring a Tim Sheens in and rush someone in like that. I just don't think it was a well thought out decision and now they're paying for it. You know, I don't uh, think they need to learn much more. I honestly don't. If you they, if you if you if, yeah. if you need someone to teach it, like the guys have both played between them, they played thirty seasons of rugby league. Yeah, that's like, true. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, come I'm, more. Yeah, to if, I agree with you. If you don't like, I'm telling you, they would be more knowledgeable than most of the coaches out there at the moment. Yeah, together they they're a good co- look. Honestly, I, I really hope that the the Tigers can turn it around. Um, what what's their issue playing wise? Like, obviously, everyone turns to the coaches. But what's happening player wise? I don't. I'm actually confused as to why they only put on what twelve points against a Knights that didn't have Ponga, who's yeah. probably their only probably attacking the same player. amount against the Gold Coast. I think yeah, it was, it was tw- 20, 20, 10, twenty to twelve. Or but well, yeah. 10 so points, what, I think they what's uh, what's actually going on? There's no flair, no spark. Luke. I mean, I know Luke Brooks gets a lot of the heat, but it's all falling on his shoulders. I mean, he needs someone that really offers more spark. He's got Arpy though. Like, I mean, what more could you want than yeah. having a, 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 a premiership? A it premiership could be dummy half. It could be they need uh, more time to gel. Maybe. I mean, they lost Jackson Hastings, which I think. I think to be honest, I think I thought he should have stayed in, yeah. and it should have been the other way around. I mean, Brooks has had a decade. I agree. Same result. I agree. I don't know. I've, I mean, I, I think honestly, for well, you, you've seen what happened with Hastings after the game. I don't, I don't, think I don't that, think he's a well liked player. So I mean, seems to have. Problems but he, but he went to apologize, right? He went to apologize. It's not like he's gone there to I be, know, but to be the, you know, to be a prick about it. He actually went to say, "Hey, man, I'm sorry for what happened in the game. It was the heat of the moment." But you know what? Certain players, if if someone that's genuine is going to come apologize to you, you, usually let it go. But that looked like a lot more than just a tackle. It would have been a lot more, but, but I mean, uh, look. Of course, we don't from know what, what we saw, yeah, 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 obviously. But I feel like there was a reason why Jackson did leave, and mm. it would have been maybe attitude. Maybe it wasn't like. Look, I, I you know, I, I really hope the Tigers can turn it around. I don't want to see them getting the spoon again. But I mean, it's either them or Gold Coast at the moment. I, I didn't expect much of them. I thought they would start off the season quick because I looked at the draw and yeah. had a few home games at Leichhardt. But I thought, uh, as uh, it reminded me of previous seasons where certain clubs would talk up a big game and start off quick and then fizzle out. Yeah. Like, they haven't even started off quick. <laughs> they don't have a bad spine. I'm, so con- exactly, I'm very no. confused. Um, I, 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 honestly, I think Dane Laurie's not a bad player, but they've got Charlie Staines there at fullback well, this got, week. Regardless, Laurie, Staines, you got Dewey, Brooks, and you got Uppy. Yeah. Like, far out. That's still, like, on paper, that's better than probably a fair few clubs right yeah. now. Probably just give them. They might need a bit of more time. Yeah, to Yeah, I feel like we shouldn't. Maybe we're being harsh. Look, I'm not running know. them off. I think we're. Yeah, that's the thing. I feel like we've. We're. I feel like we give them a bit of time. There's still, there's still a big chance to beat Canterbury this weekend at Belmore. So no, I'm, I actually don't know who to tip in that game. I feel like because with Tigers, it's a Belmore home game being pushed. Dogs don't play well at Belmore. They haven't played as Tad would long. say. As Taj would say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got this. We got this, mate. <laughs> Funny story. I wonder what Finch would say. <laughs> Funny story. He actually gets nervous about the dogs playing at Balboa. I do too. Look, if I... T- <laughs> I no, 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 no. <laughs> Honestly, the last win, I think, was was against Melbourne, 20 to 12. And just to show you how long ago it was the one at Belmore, <laughs> Sean Lane still played for the Bulldogs. They lost to Manly at uh, Brookvale. Brookvale. Yeah. <laughs> He, I still I remember against us saying, yeah. spewing, imagine it was Balboa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, he God. loses sleep over it. He'll, if I don't tip Canary today, um, he will wait to after got, the game uh, to remind tip, me. I've got to, yeah, I've got to tip, I've got to tip the Tigers. But no, we'll, you know what? I might change my mind. It's not. How tip, dare you? It's not tipping. I bring time you here. Call you a superstar. Nah, you tip it, against the Bulldogs. It's not, it's right. not, nah, bro. You come got, on. You guys got to sell me the dogs because. For Nelson to be out at almost thing, Jerome Hughes and Harry Grant were the only two, two physical, noted first graders. reliable players in that Melbourne Storm side. They get a lot of players game. back this week, but yeah, I just Jerome Hughes. I was I probably what didn't, a player. Yeah, 
But I think I skimmed over that lineup too quick to realize they were missing that many players to still tip Melbourne. Oh, yeah, they were missing a lot. Monster. But to be honest, e even then, like Melbourne for a long time have always come out, played at Melbourne, no matter who's there, they've they've always played well. I know Munster would have made a big difference. Um, you know, Kamek Mitha was also out. Olam. He's, Olam, he's back this week. Uh, I think I think even though it, we got the Mel we got the Melbourne Storm in a really good position when we played them, I think it's it sort of kicked us a little bit I think it kick us into year oh, yeah. it gives us that confidence yeah. to say if this is how we can play then we need to be able to replicate that let's let's use that as a reference point we played like that against Melbourne in Melbourne let's keep it going I don't think you know I don't think the you know this team being the new team that it is and Ciro coaching his second game and it being at Belmore they're going to come out hard they don't want to lose in Belmore again they want to start turning that record around obviously and and I have to say this I'm sorry, Bulldogs. I tipped against you last week and you won. I'm never tipping you against the Bulldogs ever again. Ever. Yeah, please, Mark my words. Please I'll stick never by him. tip against the please Bulldogs stick again. By him. So I have something to ridicule you on every week. <laughs> yeah, dude. Brother, you, your team is the Dragons. I'll start ridiculing you from right now. Don't talk. You support the Dragons. You have no right to last speak. Week. Dragons and ill supporters should just keep man, quiet. Everyone's He's the us only the good thing about your team. All it took was one week. We're out of the spoon. Ben talk. Hunt is the only good thing about your team. Slam, uh, Slam played well. Uh, so actually, Slam had a hug from Latrell, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it takes. Oh, <laughs> Rob Latrell. Oh, my Latrell. Isn't he amazing? Look, I've, I love I've gone, um I've gone Canterbury this week. I think they're on a high. They're at Belmore. Um, they want to build on that momentum. They don't want to obviously uh, go back to losing ways. Mm. So I'm going to go Canterbury actually by 14 points this week. Read yeah. Marnie. I'm going to go Bulldogs 13 plus. I'm expecting a big Omar? game from the forwards, especially kick out. You know what? I reckon it will be 1 to 12. Ooh. Doggies 1 to 12? Yeah, I feel like Doggies will win 1 to 12. I mean, yeah. Okay. It just depends. T Tigers, Tigers can bring the worst out of another team. I, I think it could be scrappy. The old Tigers did with Benji and Co. No, even, even this Tigers team, you're right. I mean, that night's Tigers game, I'm like sorry. It, can, it can become a very sloppy game, it and can. I feel like it may. And the dogs do still have some errors in them. I think the dogs still have a, think, a few errors I in think, them. Kick, actually, sorry. Kick, yeah, go on. I, I just want to say, <laughs> the Bulldogs actually made more errors in Melbourne than Melbourne did, and we still won. Converted their chances. They had a lot. Yeah, there. Yeah. And, and we bombed a couple. Preston was great. Kept linking but up. Far out. Tigers need this game bad. Uh, like they, they cannot be three. I middle. reckon. I reckon Kikau is going to have a huge game. He's going to be a star. And I think uh, local junior Papali Jacob will mark him too. I think Jacob, Jacob Keraz. Keraz is going to have a. Uh, it's his home game. He's probably dreamt of playing at Bill his whole he, life. He never plays a bad game. He's. I think Keraz he's going to have player. an amazing game. He never plays a bad game. Keraz, and. Fox has been good too. Oh, you guys got a good side. Are the lower grades playing at Belmore before the game? I haven't done I think they might be. I'm not sure. It might, uh, might be family day at Belmore. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I got to see Carl Alawapu and Carlet. Carla Rajab in the halves at Cogra Oval. Destroy him. Unbelievable, the both of them. I mean, that Carla Rajab, his vision and his passing game, it literally made it look easy. Are they a natural chance of winning um, New South Wales Cup? What is it called now? It's not New I South Wales Cup. I think it's knock-on effect Knock-on knock effect. Oh, I'm just saying, and I'll tell you now, Carl Olawapu, um, if he has a few more good games and Flanagan doesn't perform, I wouldn't be surprised if Olawapu, he's in the 22-man squad. Yeah, he's in the he's And he's been creeping him ever closer to that 17. Yeah. Um, I think he's at 19 or 18 now, but wow, he yeah. takes command. And Rajab, I think he, the, I think he's just underestimated. His talent yeah, is yeah. immense. Yeah, definitely underrated. He's a very smart player. I mean, strong. some of those balls he gave. And he's strong. And he's strong, strong with the ball. Strong with the Your ball. fullback, Papali, went good. Josh Papa Papali, whatever yep. he Yeah, uh, Your forwards, Tarpini and Co. <laughs> they got a real roll on. But just those two boys, yeah. Carl Alawapu and Carlo Rajab, they need to be given a dig this year in first grade. thing is, uh, what I like about Carlo Rajab is that he just looks like a natural half. Yeah, he's got it. Like he's, he, I feel like he's got that that ability that a lot of players need to build. So, I mean, look. A lot will probably be more of a 5'8 type, yeah. But I think, look, they might, I mean, just depends how Flanagan goes, but uh, even at halfback, if they want to give him that chance, I reckon he'll take it with both yeah, hands. Yeah, I, I reckon he'll do well. Honestly, even at He organises, he's good at organising the whole team. Uh, look, I do think he'll get his chance this year at some point, um, but hopefully it's for good reasons and not bad, but let's see how we go. Um, let's so, I mean, <laughs> we're supposed to be going through a quick review of the last round, but it's uh, <laughs> we're sort of sitting here uh, talking. It's lovely to have you, man. I've got to say, it's just really good to have you it's on. It's always man. good just, when Canterbury wins. It's always good when Canterbury yeah, wins. Go the doggies! Yeah. 
The oh, kennel. man. Oh, man. I look, the, the kennel, let me tell you, a few more wins. They're going off. It's going to go off, it's mate. It's going to be a Facebook party. <laughs> <laughs> Might have um, a kennel uh, TV right outside. Yeah. I, I mean, you know what? I think if it keeps going, we're going to yeah, have what? to do that, bro. Where's the camera? Which one am I looking at? There's about 50 in here. <laughs> Kennel Fan TV. Kennel Fan TV. These guys, if you see them at Balmore or anywhere, You might see me this week. If they're going to ask you questions, please stop by and answer them. Come on, guys. You I, w- I want to see this. I'm the one that's pushing for this Kennel TV. I want to see the fans. I want to hear what they got to say every single week. week. Yeah. And I want before game and after game. And maybe half time. But before <laughs> and after, because I want to see the difference in personalities. <laughs> let's see how we go, bro. Do you want to roll into a quick uh, review? Yeah, let's, let, let's do let's it, man. Let's do it. Um, so, Panthers beat the Rabbitohs, 16-10. Thoughts, boys? Look, um, Panthers are Panthers. Panthers, I, look, I tipped South. So I still thought they would get home, but they were quite underwhelming. I think Penrith's forwards scored the uh, – outdone them this game. I know yeah. Burgess – Arrow to Talo, big loss. Yeah. Oh, look, yeah. and uh, Absolutely. Burgess was strong for South, but it was just out of the Penrith forwards. And then I think it was a blessing for Penrith when Kenny went off for HIA because Sonny Luke came on and just rolled, Changed the game. rolled, yeah, yeah. rolled. I- Honestly, I'm that, that, that's, that's almost a grand final preview. I don't clear, see too many sides so? better than them two. Yeah. yeah, Brisbane been going well, but those two, they'll be in the top four. Cleary's oh, kicking game was strong. Guaranteed. Back to where yeah, it yeah, yeah. Totola and Arrow missing well, against Fisher-Harris and those boys. I feel like that was the big difference. That was, yeah. yeah. And, and look, Fisher-Harris, Leota, uh, Spencer they Lenu. got a beautiful front row. Well, what a, that's an amazing just, front row. Their team is just, you know, one to like seven. Fisher-Harris is not normal. Seriously, what is that? Like, year after year after bro, year. How did he come there? He has, he's good. Came um, out of nowhere. He's too. non-stop. He is. He gives you. I still, the energy I still is, think uh, he, he's up there in the top five. Premier front rowers for me, you, Payne Haas is number one. Payne Haas is a freak, but there's a big difference in the way them two play. Yeah, like Payne Haas is guaranteed, but Fisher Harris for a team like Penrith is the perfect player. He doesn't give you a bad game. Oh, no, he never saying, goes missing. Yeah, I don't I'm remember him having He might lose game. on points to opponents. He gives, like, you, the, say, he like gives Haas, you a crazy 20 30 minutes. Game. Gives you a crazy 20 30 minutes. But just on Payne Haas, like even when the Broncos last year, when they're sort of on their slide, like Payne Haas every week, He's doing 180. Too much. 200, 200, every single game. Oh, like, I said, it's burning I said him it to out. a lot of people that will, I don't think any front row should be playing 80 minutes at the moment. Only, down. especially at that age. Payne House is a 15-year player. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like smashing him that early is probably not going to be the best for him. Well, well, well honestly, the problem is last year. they had no one. Yeah, so, no yeah, one else was putting yeah, his hand up. But now they've got people like Carrigan and that signed up. Uh, uh, well, he, well, he's a he's a Murray type player. He's an excellent he? player, yeah. Carrigan, man. He killed New South Wales last year. Great player. Him, he, he just, I remember that one game, he he, scored, he, he ran like 700 metres or something. We'll get to him shortly, but should we go on to the... Yeah, so next, Eels and Sharks. Uh, disappointing to see the Eels. Uh, Eels missed another one. They should have won. But Cronulla will kid in. He just pops up. Every good. That's That's great great he's response. David one. Peachy 2.0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's David Peachy 2.0. Honestly, he just plays, looks, runs. He's just so much like David Peachy. And uh, yeah, uh, the thing about the Eels is they've, they're always in it and they've always got that chance like that. that they're not a bad side. They're, they're not a bad side. They got a revelation. They found Hopgood. Oh, my oh, God. Right. Man. Great player. He Bolt, started the game. Also for the Blues. Uh, I mean, knowing Fitler, he's got the skill. Knows. He definitely has. Yeah, the skill. that little show and go, incredible. And he's just offload. Tough. He's, he was. Tough. I think he had a hand in both tries. I think. I know. Yeah. I know. Para is a strong team, but they could find themselves in a situation here. They've lost two games at home. Have you seen their next three games? That could be well zero and five. They got Manly. I think the Roosters in Penrith. Mm. That, that could be well zero and five. They might blow their chances of making the eight, which it's happened to good sides they'll before. They the missed out. They'll make the eight. I, was, I still think they're a they'll top make the team. tape. They'll make. They just started really slow. Uh, they'll be zero and five. I think the competition is a bit tougher this year, where the, there'll be a lot more uh, play, uh, teams pushing for top four. But I don't think the Eels are necessarily a bad team, as you no, say. They still have Very great halves. Yeah, Clint side. Gutho is a good fullback. They've yeah. seen missing. Um, look, when you're starting second row as a cart right and. Uh, uh, Papali was a Papali <laughs> no. your fanboy uh, Matt Dury Matt Dury he runs good lines Papali was a big loss he's, for he's me, a massive loss Dury's a turn star I still remember when uh, Talakai laid him out a few years ago he was up Papali like and Marnie like were that was probably a the humongous. two players that Eel should have kept for another five out. years yeah. at least but look do you know when actually when, when they re-signed Clint Gutherson and they lost yeah, Marnie right. and um, and, uh, Papali. and uh, Papali I actually still, I don't know if you remember we had this discussion Marnie. I said that they should have let 
Clint Gutherson go and keep Mani and Papali'i. That was honestly my opinion back then. New and I, honestly, I stand by it. And Nia Cora. Oh, Nia Cora. 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 Papali'i from 11 and 12. That's where they've lost but, that. But game. they have been playing without Ryan Madison and Sean Lane, who I think were really big for them Sean last Lane year. Sean Lane is great. You know what? They, uh, they'll they'll come good. They're, they're uh, they will come top, good. Yeah, top four, top but, but you we'll, know what? We'll revisit this we will when they're 0-5. But I still can't believe... The season. Then we'll have a good chat. We'll but you know what? Chat. I still can't believe Ryan Madison chose to take the four-game suspension over paying $4,000. Like, for me... Could have, uh, you could have done a go, go fund me. I'm sure they would, everyone would have paid the <laughs> that's, out 10 cents each. That, that'll be a great conversation to have with Ryan Madison. So, <laughs> uh, so we can actually get the real reason. Yeah, I think we can. Uh, we only saw the side of it. Yeah. That it was like, oh, the guy just wants to say... I'd love to hear his yeah. voice. So let's get him on the show. Yeah, we'll get Matto on the show. <laughs> um, uh, Broncos, Cowboys? Broncos are amazing. I went Broncos. I got it right. I went Cowboys and, boy, am I eating humble pie. Mate. Reese Walsh is a... Watching that, f- I used to watch rugby league as a fan and then obviously spent a lot of years being coached by amazing coaches. Uh, I was mentioning, I think, to you the other day, I had Fitzgibbon who was yeah. Yeah. one of the best defensive coaches I've ever seen and... As a fullback, you read numbers, and I Reese feel Walsh. like no matter what position, no matter what side you put players in, Reese Walsh finds a way to make you guys have one less he's number. Just a, he's he's got it. Is that is the, foot, the speed and footwork? And he's got the, the ca- acceleration. And he's got the charisma. It's just everything's yeah. always happening around Mate, him. You if, know, they can keep, if they can keep Reynolds injury free. Be, they are a top four side. They'll be hard to beat, man. They'll be very hard to beat, yeah. man. Unbelievable, but. Brisbane, because they're playing a lot better than what everyone expected. I don't think anyone expected them good to be to this good. Yeah, it's yeah. all Reynolds, they got Stags and Farm Fa- was a massive loss. I don't right. know how they yeah. lost. Yeah. He's all class. He's amazing. And then you got two great wingers, Reese Walsh. He's like a Rolls Ma'am and Fink. Like, the and series. then you got Haas and Carrigan at the oh, front. Flegler off the bench. Glove. Flegler could start it's, for you. You know what? It's a very well rounded It's a team, team good enough yeah. to Flegler's win. Flegler's going yeah. as well. Agreed. Agreed. Reynolds has to stay. If Reynolds stays injury free, and Reese Walsh continues. Cobb is a freak. Oh my if, god! If these guys stay injury yeah. free, yeah, that's going to be their downfall. Ezra I don't think they have. Any, I don't think they have enough depth in that Brisbane yeah, yeah, yeah. side to um, push if Reynolds or someone. They're a young injured. team still as well. I, I mean, I, I don't like. For example, if if we say up like a Broncos v Penrith, but I who's don't... young? Who's young? And, like. Uh, Oh, Games got, wise, you still Haas and that, even though they're young by age. Oh, he's played by like they played Origin and yeah, Kangaroos, yeah, yeah, yeah. so there's not many really young players yeah, like yeah. other than Reese Walsh. Like those centers, yeah, yeah. they've had a few years in them now. If someone was young, it was that Penrith side winning the last two comps. Absolutely, that's a young side. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think age plays a big um, part anymore. Mm. I feel like they're good enough with Reynolds and that. They've got enough brain to win a comp. Roosters Warriors. We, we said it'd be a close game. I think we both went the Roosters. I oh, know I did. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I went Roosters hoping for a Warriors win. Uh, uh, look, the Warriors are my second team. I, I just, yeah, I love the Warriors. Like everything about them. You know, I, I think that, you know, if they were to get their back end right, they'd be such an amazing. Anyway, let's not get into that. But Roosters Warriors. I, honestly, I didn't think the Roosters played that well um, no, to win. The Warriors didn't take their chances. And Warriors didn't take their chances. Swally. I mean, Roosters need a bit. They need a bit. I love Kerry still. I feel like um, Kerry, he's yeah. probably one of their – he's the difference between that side winning the comp and not. Yeah, if, if he stays fit. You you know, got Clyden was sense. a massive loss. He's a big loss. He's definitely a he's big a loss. He's a huge – Because him gets and back. Kerry together on that left edge would have been – Their combo like, – That would have yeah, been scary. Yeah. Let's hope he's a, he you know gets himself right and he's able to play this year. So yeah, uh, that'll Hopefully. Be, that'll yeah, be hopefully. Yeah, I'm sure the game's missing him, so let's hope for the best for him. Fins up, Dolphins, Raiders. I love the Fins. Man. That, that could be my new favourite team. It's such that count? exciting to can watch. I can you I have as my favourite team? You can have whoever you want. I love right. the Bromwich boys. Doggies first. I played with Kenny. And then Dolphins second, yeah? I played with, I <laughs> I played with Kenny. I played with a lot of those boys at the Dolphins. Um, they're, they're exciting to watch. You just want to tune in. Wayne them. Bennett. What a freak. What a, what an absolute You're cheering for him as your second favourite team. I think they're everyone's second think, favourite they team. They are, right? Honestly, yeah. I really want to see them succeed. I, like, here's the thing about NRL expanding. It makes the whole game better. And as we see this year, like the first two rounds have... Titans like, were like that, though. I remember I when like they came, but I remember when they came into the comp, they, they had have, some really good years. They did, and I remember they made the finals as well, but they didn't have the hype that the Dolphins have. Yeah, they didn't yeah, have the course. juniors that the Dolphins have. They don't have the backing of the... Like, I don't know. Uh, Red Cliff's got a... A long history as I mean, well. Yeah, they've got a really good forward pack. 
Oh, they've got a great full pack. Look, Sean O'Sullivan has been absolutely... Yeah, he surprised me so much. You know, Katawa, he's the confident Katawa's king. Unbelievable. Good. And, and, and I good. think he is... Marshall King's playing good footy. Unbelievable. He's out this week, but yeah. yeah he's he is playing. out. Yeah, suspended. Who are they playing? Uh, this week, I believe, the Dolphins... Uh, Knights. Knights, yeah. Wow, they could go three and up. I think they will. Yeah, I, think I don't see Knights beating them. Yeah. But you know what? Not with Ponga, not without Ponga. Ponga just, and Brayley out. Oh, right. And uh, uh, Saifidi's out for five weeks. Man, that's, yeah, that's, but you your, know what? that's your team. A strong, uh, hopefully a Dolphins win this week. Uh, and then, you know what? It sets the stage for a mouth-ordering clash Broncos around. Dolphins. Four. I, I want to see both nothing. Queens Brisbane sides do well. That'll get 40,000 let, Let's face Easy. it, uh, that's, that city's got the capacity to have a third and third team down the track as well. I mean, yeah. I want to see. I want to see. Well, that. I mean, if Sydney can do it. Sydney oh. can do nine teams or ten teams, and Brisbane's had rugby league steeped in for the probably the same amount of time, and they're probably more fanatical up there than Sydney. Which is pretty disappointing that Brisbane have won two more teams. titles. Yeah. I mean, they've won two in the last what twenty years. Yeah, I mean a lot of th- that is sort of the discussion around the it's time for Broncos. I mean, they're up against fifteen Who? other sides. I know, but I'm talking about Queensland. Like yeah. usually, well, war- I mean. They have all the talent basically pushed by all the other sides. It's hard to keep on to them. Yeah, I don't think Brisbane's a team that would lose too much talent with the club that they have and the power they have. Well, I mean, yeah. Look, if there's an 18th team, honestly, I think it has to be Perth. Perth. It has to be Perth. It uh, extends I, the game. I, I it makes the game. I think really if we're going to be still... the National Rugby League, it has to be National, not the East Coast Rugby I, League. I reckon that they're better off. Um, reallo- uh, basically relocating a Sydney team Sydney team there similar to what happened with the South Melbourne Football Club which became the Sydney Swans and because oh, is this, that what happened yeah, yeah. because think about okay. it Sydney's still playing literally and that worked out well yeah almost other than the grand final last year but, oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, won yeah. A few grand we're a Swans six. podcast alright but we you, you relocate uh, that's one. the first ever grand final I actually went to watch oh, could you imagine I got blown away they don't go imagine. again uh, don't go again it was cold again. I was so disappointed with that but anyway anyway let's yeah. not get into that you relocate so one Sydney team there you still 17 and put a third Brisbane team in I know but who's gonna who's gonna agree to it we yeah. There's one candidate and it worked well. Cronulla Bulldog. Sharks. No. <laughs> Cronulla Sharks. Cut you off. No more. Hey, hey we're not bringing them on again. That's it. Cronulla Cronulla you got me, bro. You got Cronulla me. The Western Bulldogs. <laughs> Cronulla will work good in Perth. I, I don't think anyone will accept it. That's the problem. No, no. Even even if you give the financial. I reckon that's oh, what do you mean, man? Cronulla's been one of the better sides of the comp. Doesn't matter. They're going to go and take. Well, who's going to? Well, who are they Sydney, support? When South Melbourne relocated to Sydney, they were one of the better sides in the VFL back Look, then. Look, it doesn't oh, matter what the no, AFL no. did, bro. No one cares. Anyway, I'm just saying how it works. Um, we've already covered Storm Bulldogs. Go to the doggies. Twenty six twelve. West Tigers Knights, we've spoken about that. For the Knights to win that game, I thought... Wow, what an escape. You know what? When Kalen Ponga went off, I thought, you know what? The Tigers have been given an absolute lifeline. Yeah. They've got to put 40 on them. That's what I thought. You know, 80 minutes later, and 80 minutes I'll never get back, mind you. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, was a, it wasn't a Just great game. Drama and scrappiness. But and nothing's worse than a 12-14 game. Yeah, but the Knights... Have nothing much well done. I mean, he, he, even Adam Elliott went down in that game. Like, there's just so... That, I can't believe they won. Honestly, They've... I, I don't remember, There's yeah. about six, seven players there that are just struggling. I agree. At the Tigers or the Knights? No. Both, both sides, yeah. I guess. I, I see, look, and I'm sorry, Knights, Dominic Tigers. Young's a big loss. I can't believe they would let him go. Like, you know what? He was oh, probably the difference in the end between the sides. He was. Yeah, he, yeah. Was. he, was. he was. But they've signed, they've signed two backs from, uh, from who England. Cares? Um, who, 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 who cares? Who cares? Dominic Young was unreal. And he was yeah. probably one of the better players in the World Cup as well. Yeah, so. oh, he's he, an athlete. He, the World Cup has put him on the map, I think. And he's he sort just of, backed it up He's here. backed it up now in, in the NRO. And it's a real shame. But look, Rooster's That's a Rooster a, special. Yeah, it is a, I was going to say, Rooster's are smart operators and they know how to pick them. So, it's going to be interesting to see what Roosters do because they've got a far out. They've got a massive fight. Manu, Suwali, Dominic Young, Tedesco. Like... Where are they getting this money? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hey, I'm come down, go to tell us. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. They've actually signed North, uh, Nathan Brown as well from the Eels now. Yeah, he's a good uh, buy now. Now it's a very a good, good buy, season. Yeah. Buy. I think they would have got him on their team. The club. But you know what? It, it may, like for me, I think. You know what? Roosters are very, very. Their depth is they're, very. They're very easy to say yes to at the moment. Yeah. Like as a player that's that young, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're but very easy to look, say yes everyone to. Everyone thinks, like, and it's just getting. Over it, it's a sombrero cap and the over the cap and the brown paper. It's right, not everyone that. does it, no, but sorry. yeah, okay, we can go into that another time. But, but what I'm trying to say, 
The players it's are a smart. very, very easy place to say yes to. They got they sell you the about? dream outside yeah. of rugby league, Thank and you. they sell you the dream inside players rugby league. Players are smarter these days, and the management looks their own player managers look after them. Bondi, bro, Payne outside. I can. I'll give you a perfect example. They got the right example. people involved. Boyd Cordner, still a part of the club. Mm. Jake Friend with the academy side over there. Mitch Orbison with the academy team there. Minicello still doing all their nutrition stuff. Oh. Mate, if you're loyal enough to them. They will make sure but you they, have a very comfortable life outside of rugby. But the Roosters being the eastern suburbs, and it's probably where the it's most the millionaires area. live in yeah, Australia, yeah, yeah. the players will get all investment advice from all the connections yeah, it's there. It's 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 all this sort of right yeah, advice, yeah. and people want to play there for unders because yeah. they know outside and the game they're winning. Trent and Nick, they're not stupid. No, no. I they know, think, they'll sell you the dream, and majority of the time- You might be there for another 20 years. Majority of the time, you probably get the dream. Yeah, and Nick Politis, man, he's a smart businessman. He knows what he's doing. Um, uh, um, you know what I think is going to be missing out in all this? I think come come sort of beginning of 2024, I actually think it's going to be um, Joseph Manu that gets cut. That's what I think. No, I don't think so. Well, they've re-signed Teddy. They've got Joseph, they've got Suwali'i. They've got Dominic Young, right? They've still got Tupo. They've got – who's there? Who's there who's it doesn't matter. Tupo is moving on. Do you, do, do you remember when um, they won in 2013? Yeah. Do you remember they had 12 out of 13 international players yeah, starting? Yeah. They can easily do the same thing again. But but, but I'm saying, will Joey Manu want to play centre for he another three to five years? I don't, I don't think he'll... I don't think he'll... Um, I think he's miffed. And not everyone wants to play fullback. He wants to play fullback. He's come out and said he wants to play fullback. Has he? Yeah. That's why he only re-signed for a year with uh, with the Roosters when he only extended for a year. Could be going cross And don't road. forget, you're, he's on centre money. He wants to be on fullback money. That's where the difference comes as well. But the thing is, I think Joseph Manu deserves more than centre money regardless I do. because of the positions he's covering at the Roosters. He's incredible. Joseph Manu, honestly, a lot of the times... He'll I go feel good at ball player, number he, six. He wins them games just out of pure talent. Um, That'll be a big loss. If, um, if, they lose if he does go somewhere, he'll I don't know who he'll go to, but man, there'll be a lot of clubs after that signature. I reckon he'll have 14 or 15 clubs after him. I reckon every club will be after yeah. him. There's... Not one club that wouldn't need a Joseph Manu right yeah, now. Yeah, I agree. Agreed. Agreed. Six, seven, one, wing. Wherever, bro. Wherever you, you put him wherever and he'll kill a fight. But you. just just as a player, do you really do you really and want to he, be going to he is the nicest bloke. Yeah. Oh, he, but do you really want to be going to clubs as West Tigers and, and Newcastle Knights? How old would he be? It's about 25, 26, so yeah, he's in no, his probably mid-20s. a little bit older. No, he's about 27. I think he's twenty five. No, I played a couple with him. I played a couple of them. So he might be pushing. So I would have been three years older than him. But I feel like yeah, he'd be pushing twenty-seven. I feel like he hasn't, you know he hasn't pushed. He hasn't. I'd uh, love to know his potential. Honestly, I don't think he's reached his potential. Joseph, yeah, uh, I played some amazing footy last year, man. Yeah, look, I, I, it'd be I, hard I, to not to see better than that. Uh, I think I think if you if he twenty six so yeah he's, he's probably well if he's got one more year he's probably got a massive five year in him mm. and that could be anywhere one point two a year. Could be, in fr- could be in rugby as well. Oh, Moscow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Swaleigh, I thought, was going to go to European rugby because he's got a rugby Swaleigh background. Swaleigh should have gone to rugby. I think he will. <laughs> Honestly, I think he will. I hate losing players from the game, but there's certain players that you could probably see the it's best talent. out of and Swaleigh. I think because he hasn't ruled it out either. He was at Kings as well. He's yeah, a rugby yeah, union exactly. boy. And he hasn't ruled it out either. So, honestly, I think I think he'll end up going. Maybe Do Murray will go. I hope not. I love Murray. I yeah, think, hey, I for think him he... to say he's open to the conversation. Yeah, exactly. Because it's not like he can't get top dollar in an NRL. He doesn't even need to say that he'll still get top dollar. He's yeah. the best lock in the game right center. now. Where's he going to play outside center or second flanker? Five. He'll play second five inside oh, okay. center for yeah. sure. That's how. That's how. He, that's what he grew up playing. Yeah. Um, he could play flanker easily. But or, or I thought outside. He'll kill, he'll kill it. If he goes to rugby, he'll kill inside. it. And, it's, and you know what? The Wallabies will be so lucky to get someone like uh yeah, like Murray's Murray. a freak. All right. Yeah. Um, and then Dragons, Titans. I thought, honestly, because I was at that game, I didn't think um, the I Dragons thought, played really well. No, I thought Gold Coast was just dreadful. Look, Gold because Coast. Because they're three through 32 points. Yeah, but Gold Coast, think about it. You know how the 18 points came? Literally. Um, under six errors by the Dragons on the defensive line. One on one missed tackles. Right, that's enough about the Dragons. Um, we're done with it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, hold on, hold on. Dra- no Dragons on the kennel podcast. All right. I will. You know what? No more Dragons talk on the kennel. No more forever. Dragons talk on the kennel. Forever. <laughs> Sorry, mate. It's come from. It's come from the inner house <laughs> star. He loves the Dragons. <laughs> I'm just saying. He loves I the Dragons. Gold Coast. Ben Hunt. Ben Hunt. Just say. You know what? He's 
Ben Look, Hunt. Uh, ben Hunt is the Dragons. Okay? Just to show you. Ben Z- Hunt is the Dragons. Zane Musgrove and Little had a great, great game. game. So it just shows you. Awesome. That's it. Well, they left West Tigers. Tigers. Oh, our pitch. Yeah. Okay. We're on that the target. Yeah. But, you know, I think Sloan topic, was awesome. Confidence is up now. Yeah. I don't remember Sloan having a game that good. That good ever. Hey, he, I don't. Actually, he always had moments to show how good he could be. But not 80 but he didn't have 80 And I'll just point out, if Blake Laurie's scoring against you, mind you, averages one game, every, one try every 100 games, then you're in trouble. And Gold Coast were that trend. But you know what? I actually think Blake, Blake Laurie gets had a, good game. a lot of bad raps. I think he's he's like the quintessential old-time forward. Mm-hmm. He'll just get in there. Yeah. He'll just put his body on the line. He's the punching bag, and he'll just run and run. Honestly, Blake Laurie is better than Aaron Woods by, by country mile. <laughs> Aaron Woods. I'm sorry. And he's not in the play. 17. So exactly. Thank, thankfully. Uh, you know who else played very well for the Dragons, I thought? Um, uh, Suli? No, Suli always plays well. Murdoch uh, Masilla. Murdoch Masilla. Sua. Murdoch Murdoch's Sua. always been a good yeah, player, he, man. He's got ball. He's got, he lays off the ball. He well. was really good before he left. Then yeah. he went to Super League and then he came back and he just... He's got that little foot. You know, when, what about what, that? You know move? what turned he was him on around? the wing? Yeah, but he <laughs> steamrolled the player. Do you remember him when he played for Tonga in that World Cup? Unbelievable! Yeah. Yeah. That player was, of the World Cup. I yeah, thought. that was. Yeah, 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 that was the Murdoch Masilla that everyone. He's like, very creative. He's got that footwork. He's a great song. But, uh, uh, he's, I played with him at JKs. He's been oh. played. Um, he was my junior, junior, junior Kiwi kangaroos. side. Yeah, Tamalalo. Kiwis, Kiwis where Lolo. What was that? What was it like playing with Tamalalo? Tamalalo was unreal. I think he was actually my roommate. If it was my roommate, we hung out a lot during that Jeez. camp. But I still remember Josh Papali. Crazy story because Josh Papali was in our Kiwi side. Wow. Um, he was our best player on the field that day. He was unbelievable against a stacked Aussie side. And I remember him being pissed off he didn't get called up to go to the Kiwis World Cup squad. Wow. And ever since then, Shows, yeah. what he went to the he went to Queensland and never looked back. And now he's played a number of Origins and Kangaroo and games. And been the best forward on the field majority of the time. Yeah. Honestly, wow. but that's a Papali story. He was he was just, unbelievable. Yeah, and honestly, like you look at the Raiders forward pack, like they got Tapane and and Papali. Like what a forward pack, man! Honestly, yeah. we got some good forwards in the game. It's it's. Um, I thought also for the for the uh, Gold Coast while they did lose, I thought Sam Verrills. What an incredible, incredible dummy. Like, you know what? I think the Roosters don't realise how big of a loss Sam Verrill's They should have kept him. They should have kept him, honestly. They should have kept him as a person to take off Smith Absolutely. and be that little extra hooker, similar to what Harry Grant did for Smith at Melbourne. You know, I, I think they could have put Smith at lock and, and kept Verrill's at nine, and he could have been an 80-minute 80, 80 hooker. Verrill's, honestly, Verrill's was the only spark that the, the Gold Coast had. had. Uh, well, yeah, and Roosters. Oh, and Roosters, I see. Well. Like, where was Fafita? You know, like, it's just, bro, he's, he just has so much Fafita talent. Fafita was so underwhelming. He went he missing in that game. So much because I previous always week, talk up Fafita. Only because I know what he can do. He's still, it's I still disappointing. Think he's he ran rough shot against the Tigers and then comes against St. George. And not only was he missing an attack, in defense, he missed some key tackles yeah, he did. there. He did. That was just like, that what Terrell's are you doing? Loan, that Terrell's, that squ- that, um, I wish to- he went back to Brisbane. Me too. I wish I wish he played outside Mam or Reynolds. Yeah. Just for just a year to he just also, have a side where like he doesn't need to be the best player. Can you imagine what he would have done outside he, Reynolds? He missed the tackle on Laurie And as then well. outside uh, Reese Walsh? I, 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 man, honestly, I wish you went to Brisbane. Only, only just to see them be like a shoe in for a grand final yeah. spot. Wow, anyway, it was it was a great round, and I think we, we've got another another good round coming up. Excited again. Um, so right now, what we're going to do is we're going to just run a quick sort of tips on the upcoming round. I'm not going to go into too much depth. Um, so uh, Seagulls uh, against Eels on the Thursday night. Debo, you, uh, you know what? I'm just going to stick to it and say the Seagulls, they're at home at Brookie. It was on a two-game losing streak. I think the Seagulls are going to add to their misery. Mm-hmm. I'm going the Seagulls by 10. I'm Seagulls as well. I'm a massive fan of DCE. Schuster's back. Schuster's back. back. And DCE is just yeah. is the ultimate professional. They've got, they've got a good team. Yeah. Score? Or well, Roughly. I feel, like, I feel like I feel like one to twelve. One to twelve. Yeah, I like Seagulls one to twelve. Yeah, look, I'm I'm, I'm actually going to go against the grain. I'm going to say the Eels are going to bounce back. Okay, one to twelve. I'm going to say Eels by one to twelve. Um, Knights and Dolphins. 
Fins up. Fins, Fins up. up all the way. Look, um, one to twelve. Yeah, nine, nine's are missing a few plays. No, I'm going actually, more than that. Actually, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm 12 going plus. twelve plus. I'm going fourteen. I'll just name it. Fourteen to the Dolphins. Thirteen plus. Yeah, thirteen. Plus. Friday night, Roosters and Rabbits. Oh, I've got to say Rabbits. Yeah, I'm definitely. I think Rabbits uh, is just showing a little bit more. Rabbits find capacity. Rabbits find a way to always. Roosters find a way to always play well against the Rabbitohs, but Rabbitohs are a bit more aggressive. So I feel like I, I do think we've seen a lot more from the Rabbits this yeah. year than we have look, from. Warrior well, Hargraves comes back for the Roosters. They need that, but he'll be a bit underdone. Look, they're still a bit underwhelming at this stage. I think Radley's in as well. They don't, don't have, think, bro. Roosters I, are stacked. Man. I don't think Radley will play. I know. I'm just saying, like Radley's back in as well. I don't think Radley should play. What's wrong with him? He had he got a head knock last game. Quite a oh, bad head knock. head knocks are going nuts. Yeah, I, I, honestly, I think... I uh, actually just want to mention on that, um, Robbo came out during the week and he said that the NRL should implement an uh, an 11-day stand-down rule if he cop a head knock. I think that's... I think that should be implemented for the for the longevity of our favourite players. Sure, you miss out one week, but if if you're getting three, but four, you don't miss out eight weeks, or you don't miss out on the season. you don't cop CTE when you're forty and and you know um, yeah. do something you know like self harm or, or lose control well, of your mind. Players. I think that's the right way. Honestly, to go. like um, as much as I want to see if, my favourite players on the field, like I said, if you go to any rugby league fan out there and you gave them the ultimatum of do you want your player to miss. Um, 11 days of football or two weeks of football or yeah. do you want them to miss the rest of the season? Majority of them will say two, two weeks. weeks. Exactly. So uh, it's, it's it's a good thing. And I'm hoping, I'm really hoping the Knights do right by Kalen Ponga and sit him down for the next six to eight weeks, figure out how they're going to, uh, you know, uh, sort of realign on where he plays because I would hate to see Kalen Ponga out retire and get out of the game. This guy, like... He's just such an excitement machine. He's like him and Reese Walsh are those types of players. Honestly, even as as even against the Bulldogs, I, I want to just see the excitement. And you know, I don't want to see him out of the game. So I hope you know um, they do right by Kalen Ponga. I'm gonna go Souths by eight. Yeah, I'm a one to twelve Souths as well. I'm, I'm actually gonna go Souths by thirteen plus. It's gonna blow him away. Are we gonna get a sellout at the game? Okay, okay. Hang on a second. Is, like is, is it at Allianz? Stay at home yeah, it's at Allianz. Uh, Roosters fans it's... stay at home in the expensive no, no, what? houses. Okay. Yeah. Is it at, what, so so which stadium is that at? Is it That's at... the new SFS, the new Roosters home ground. Oh, so it's there? Yeah. yeah oh, Sydney no. Stadium. So they will get a sellout called? or close to it? Uh, I think but they the will. But they put the tickets up by 80% for does, Rapidus fans. So doesn't matter. They'll still buy them. Yeah. Look, the fans are good. I, I think it'll be a massive crowd. I think it'll be a great game. I do think that the the the, the Rapidus, sorry, will have too much for them sort of 60th minute on. Uh, okay. Titans and Storm. I think Storm will bounce back 13 Storm. plus. I'll Titans Storm and, win. yeah, I think I'll go the Storm. Storm They've got a stack Storm of players win. back. Did yeah, I say win. Titans will bounce back? No, Storm. Yeah, yeah, Storm will definitely bounce back. They won't lose two they in got, a row. Um, they got uh, Olam's back, Coach is back. Yeah, they've Kame, Kame got, back. back. I think Tarek you know, Sims debuts for the club. I think those, Kamikamitha and Tarek Sims being in, sort of offset the loss of uh, 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 Nelson Asafa Solomona a little bit. So, yeah, the, the, they'll be. John Apezic gets a run. Oh, he's an excitement machine. He's a he will be a halfback. He's a halfback, but I think they got him in the utility role off the bench. Good to see him off the bench for a bit. Yeah, um, <laughs> Cowboys Warriors. Um, Cowboys, Cowboys Warriors. Yeah, I got Cowboys. That's, that's Cowboys home game. I'm going. I'm going Cowboys. Cowboys win. I don't think that happens again two weeks in a row. I think yeah, I, I got Cowboys by eighteen. Oh, Cowboys one to twelve. I think. I think I Warriors think, put on. No, a good fight. I feel like Cowboys will just run away with it. Well, they're missing Scott. Uh, Scott Drinkwater. They're missing. Um, they're missing uh, a couple of other players. So let's see. Let's see how they yeah, go. Yeah, drinking will be a big loss. Broncos Dragons. Uh, at Suncorp look Bronx. Broncos are riding high I know, I know the Dragons won last week I got the Broncos by 14 doesn't mean the Dragons will play too badly I just think Broncos, Broncos. got too much momentum I, I actually think Broncos 1-12 to 12, I think it will be a lot closer than people think I don't think the Dragons uh, I think the Dragons will be buoyed by their first round win um, they won't win it's just but Suncorp they, look, Suncorp look, they might get oh, a little that's bit more actually. the Dragons aren't too bad at yeah, Suncorp yeah the Dragons aren't actually too bad at Suncorp it's, not a, so. it's actually a happy hunting ground for them so I mean, and again, you might be right. They could even upset the Broncos, but I've gone 14 points. The I don't think it would be an upset, but anyway. Um, doggies versus Tigers. Go the Doggies. I've got the Doggies 13 plus. 13 plus. Yeah, yeah I got. I think I had them 16. I think the Dogs by 16. I'm going to say whoever wins is going to win by two points. 
<laughs> oh wow, he doesn't actually. He thinks I feel both. Like, I feel like cut, cut, Omer's out. <laughs> I feel like Umar's I feel out. like it's going to be very. Uh, I don't see the Tigers like uh, when we mentioned those players. Yeah. Like even though they had two terrible games, I don't see Uppy, Dewey, and Brooks not putting on tries. I, it's just very hard to see them struggle like that. If they str- you know what? If they lose again this week, um, they're definitely out of that. Day, let yeah, alone, just, let yeah. alone the twelve. There's, there's, wow. there's, look, if they lose again, I'll get. I'll keep them out. I, I will give them the spoon if they lose this week. Tigers. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I, I I don't think they'll beat the doggies. I, I think the dogs. Come out if it's a close time. game, whatever. I don't, like it's if it's fine. a close game, you say. All I'm right. saying if you're saying 13 plus dogs yeah. beating the Tigers yeah. after two losses in a row, I think it's that's a, a wooden spoon. I think it's a su- it's a Sunday day game. Yeah. Right. They're gonna both sides are gonna throw the ball around. We're gonna see a lot of points scored and a lot of errors. And yeah, that's yeah, true. but I think a lot. I think one side is going to put a stack of points on. You reckon? Yeah, I think Canterbury put a uh, stack of mate, points. Doggies on. have got this one in the bag. Raiders, Sharks. Uh, that's a tricky one. I sharks, mean, Sharks, Sharks. Yeah, uh, uh, it's at GIO Stadium. In sharks Canberra. score more tries than Raiders. I mean, they got, they got more attacking flair. At the I, I like the Sharks, but you know what? I mean, a camera going to start what do you the like season. About them, man. They scored twelve points against the Dolphins. Are they going to start three losses on the trot? Probably and no points. They don't do anything better. But I remember a game that'll. Were um they were winning sixteen nil at half time. I don't know if you remember down. this game. They got run down and lost eighteen sixteen. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Look, I don't you know, know what? I'm just going to tip the upset. I'm going to go Canberra by four. All right, all right. Uh, as much as I think the I'm Sharks, Sharks are a good. Team. Sharks. Sharks. I reckon Sharks by ten, ten to twelve. Yeah, um, so that's uh, around three coming up. Um, we're just about done uh, for this episode. Um, so. Uh, you know, just before we wrap up, I just want to say, uh, if this is the first time you watch, please like and subscribe. We've got so much more content coming on, uh, coming up. Omar will be joining us regularly, hopefully. That's I'm not plan. giving you the option. That's the plan. <laughs> That's the plan. It's been, look, it's been great to have you. Uh, you know, please like and subscribe wherever you see us. Um, you know, in the description, we've got, you know, all our socials. You can interact with us. Uh, visit the kennel forums. Um, there's heaps of stuff that we've got planned. Um, uh, and essentially, yeah, you know, no racism, stamp it out. We don't need it. Um, up the doggies. I want to say thank you to Dibbo uh, for once again for, having, for for being here once again. Oh, my. Does Dibbo remind you of Middleton? Who that, is the stats guru? Yeah, David Middleton. David, that's Dibbo Middleton. No, I'd put Middleton. I, I want to tell you uh, no, no, so I'd put Middleton in my pocket. Okay, there we go. Oh, 19, he's a David. I, I want to Come say, to the podcast and show 19, us. 1997 grand final. What was the score? Who was playing and what was the weather? I don't remember the score, but I'll tell you now. Cronulla played Brisbane. They got off to a quick start, and I think Russell Richardson dropped the ball over the line. They might have could have went up by two or three tries, but Brisbane ran him down, and I think in the end they beat him something like maybe 34-16 or something. What was the weather like? It was a night game. I remember that. It was in Brisbane. It was at the old ANZ Stadium, which used to be the Brisbane former Brisbane home ground. But it was a night game. I don't think it rained. This guy. Um, you got lucky I'll tell you what I do class. remember that day. I Dibbo remember. Middling, no, I remember one, no, no one knows more than him. I remember. Uh, 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 I'll tell you what actually, I remember. Actually, actually, I have a friend. I have a mate that I hope to bring on the podcast one day. This guy is a freak. This guy will tell you every single game going back to two thousand and one. Did you say ninety seven grand final? Yeah, that's Newcastle Manly. No, I was talking to. Oh, oh you're I was talking Super League. Super League. Sorry. <laughs> oh, there's Super League. Yeah. There was. Oh, jeez. Yeah, sick. but I can tell you. No, 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 okay, I can tell you. Ninety seven ARL twenty two sixteen. We all know the famous Darren Albert try. Andrew Johns goes the blind. Oh, okay. So they that's followed. an easy one. That's an yeah, easy yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. What colour undies was uh, Darren Howard wearing? Oh, what an clue. <laughs> what colour were his boots? Black back then. That was the norm. Come on. I think only on, one man. guy up to them wore on, black Dibbo boots. Middleton. I think, I think, uh, you know what we should do every I think, week? I reckon we should give Dibbo a game or a grand final. Just anything. Like random trivia random about random some trivia. random yeah, game. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm going to get to Because you know what? Everyone in the kennels finds out as well. They get to learn something. and then Yeah, we can make it educational. I know a bit about the dogs. The dogs of war. Supporter. When's the last time dogs won a grand final? Come on, man. 2004. Right, it's been years too long, man. man. Who was the Way captain for the dogs? It's not as long as uh, Parramatta. It was supposed to be Steve Price, but it was injured. It was Andrew Ryan. Yep. Uh, That's, anyway. That feels recent, though. Yeah. Jonathan Thurston gave us. Uh, it was off the bench and gave us to Steve Price, but then they actually ended up giving one to, to Thurston anyway afterwards. Um, 
But yeah, I think that that just about wraps, wraps it up. I just want to say a big thank you to Omar for coming no, awesome. uh, to this Thanks episode. It was, it's so so good to have you on. I think um, you know I definitely enjoyed spending the time with you with, with you gentlemen this evening. And we've got uh, William behind the behind the cameras maintaining everything. I think is, he's also there. Thanks, um, Will. He's it does a great job for us. Um, thank you guys for joining once again. Like and subscribe. We've got so much more coming up. Uh, the tune channel in. podcast. Come on. Get around the boys. Get around these boys. <laughs> Thanks, boy. Have a great one. Speak to you soon. And ladies. Ciao.